Hello everybody, this is Liz from Fallen Misfits and today I'm going to do a bit of a special uh, episode since uh, this is neither a war recap nor an attack strategy uh, video. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is uh, I'm going to apologize for not posting any videos for something about uh, I think 10 days, but I was on holiday and I had a great time and so uh, I wasn't able to record while I was there since I had no internet connection. And so I missed quite a few wars um, and the guys killed it. They were able to get great results. I think I missed the last uh, three that you see here on the board and uh, they got some exciting ones, some a little bit close ones, but overall they really dominated all the fights and it was um, very nice to see the results that they got. So I can't unfortunately, um, so the four wars that I, I, I didn't show you any results from, I won't be able to show you the, the you know, the two that are not, that I don't have access to anymore, but I'll still have some very nice ones from these last two wars that I'm going to show you now. So uh, this one was a tiny bit close. I mean, not by any stretch, really. They were not really that able to three star. Uh, and on the other side, there's one, there's always these mismatches, you know, like we have one tunnel 10, they get so much more. We're not able to get a star on the number two, but other than that, they cleaned up the entire board, which was absolutely great to see and there are two nice attacks up top that I thought would be worth sharing so the first one is an attack by Rob and it is a La Lune attack and so Rob uh, has these beefy heroes um, level 30 AQ as you've seen uh, in my last video and now his uh, BK has reached level 26 and so he uses a Shattered La Lune, um, you know, puts his golems far and wide so he can create a very large funnel to help with his heroes. He's got a lightning spell for the clan castle that he uses at a perfect time. You know, he's able to get everything that he that he wants through that. He gets he puts the um, jump down. I think the jump didn't work all that well on the on the bottom golem as well as the EQ, but it doesn't cause much of a problem because it'll still allows his um, BK to get in and and get the two uh, air defenses that he wanted. And by the time the two air defenses are down, his AQ is still almost at full health and he can start his La Luna attack. So he's going to start from the top uh, behind the air sweeper because he wants to limit the impact of the air sweeper and his attack. Um, you know, his AQ is still at the bottom doing some damage. He's able to use these uh, rage spells to uh, speed up the access to the um, air defenses. As soon as the air sweeper is about to go down, he continues his deployment, La Lune deployment towards the bottom and he holds back a few loons that he's going to put down up top as, as you see up there in a sort of phased way so that you know that um, whiz tower who does um, splash damage doesn't damage all of his loons at the same time which I thought was absolutely very very smart and so sorry for that and so um, he's got all the defenses taken out and it's just a very nice attack very nice three star um, AQ doing some damage very easily getting everything that is left and it's a very nice attack by Rob. So that's the first attack I thought was absolutely great the second one that we're going to see is going to be on number five it's an attack by Jas on that base, uh, split wall base with, with Air Sweeper. Um, and he does a Shared La Lune as well, but he attacks from the bottom. He aims to get with his kill squad the two bottom air defenses as well as the um, Archer Queen. The walls are pretty high up. I mean, not very high up, but pretty high up. But the Archer Queen and I mean the heroes overall are not that high. Um, so he's got pretty good heroes as well. So he comes in from the bottom. He's got his jump spell. The two columns are uh, still high level of health at that point, you know, still doing some good tanking. Uh, you know, the jump is placed even in a way, you know how the, the jump spell works. Um, although it's not fully covering that bottom wall, he's still able to, use, his BK still uses it to access the the uh, Archer Queen, he's got a lightning spell for the uh, clan castle, doesn't work as well as he anticipated I'm sure, but he's now got um, all of the uh you know, all of the air defenses, the Archer Queen, he's finishing off the um, last of the CC troops and he can start his uh, La Lune deployment. You know, he comes in in a anti-clockwise fashion. He's able to get the uh, air sweeper from behind. He uses the two rages to speed up the access to the uh, 
uh, air defenses and it's just very easy job really he um, he's able to get the whole thing very easily even one of his uh, lavas is still not popped um, so pretty easy popped at pops at the end just to help him with cleanup and it's just very easy three star so I thought it, that one was pretty nice as well so the last attack I'm going to show you from that war is going to be actually a Town Hall 8 attack because it's a holo and I love to see holo attacks at Town Hall 8. Just shows people getting ready for jumping onto Town Hall um, 9. So let's move on to it. I think it was that one. Steve-O doing a great job. So he goes in, he pulls the clan castle with hogs from the bottom two hogs get the full pull there's two uh, valks in the clan castle he pulls them all to the right side with one archer let's speed that up deals with the cc with a few barbs um and he's got uh, witches in the clan castle witches in the cc when they're valks is generally a bit scary but it works pretty well on that one and he does a bk for bk swap so that he's sure the bk is not going to do any damage to his hogs uh, later on in the raid and so he expects that there is a uh, giant bombs uh, between the um, uh, you know the cannons and the whist towers at the bottom and so he does a needle holo so he, uh, he puts down the loons to take out all the defenses there he dip and then he deploys his hogs from the whist towers um, so that you know, the logic is that the hogs then don't get pulled onto the giant bomb. However, the way he deploys makes it that these hogs ended up blowing on the bomb anyway. Um, and he very quickly puts down his first heel so that he can protect his hogs. And he's managing to save about 80% of them. So it doesn't do too much damage. But so the intent was good. It's just the execution that could have been slightly improved. And so he's got a uh, start to put down wizards at the bottom for cleanup. And this is so important in the raid. Uh, he's protected his hogs with heals almost throughout the entire raid. Um, and he's moved on with cleanup already pretty well. And so it's a very nice and easy three star attack by Stevo. Uh, Tunnel late needle holo. I love to see that. So that's the key attacks I wanted to show you from that war and there's one last I want to show you from the other war that they just finished. Um, I'm not going to show you much from the last one because it was pretty pre-average war has to be said, they were rubbish. The kind of funny guys told us um, that they reported us to Supercell for uh, using Xmod, which obviously we absolutely do not do. It's pretty funny how people who don't know how to attack think that other people who can use mods. Anyway, so the first attack I wanted, the only attack I wanted to shoot from that war is on that base. Not necessarily because the base is pretty strong, but uh, you know, it took like three attack from our guys to be able to three star that base. Um, and so I thought it would be pretty good to show you the one that managed, finally managed to get it. So everybody else who attacked that base with La Lune went from the full right um, with with the shattered, with the two golems. And Chuckles decided to go a bit further uh, from the top. And so he gets the air sweeper, he gets one of the um, air defenses, he gets the archer queen, and he also gets the CC with his skill squad. So pretty good trade, but he doesn't get, he didn't try to get the two air defenses. However, he attacks from the bottom with two uh, lavas from the side where there are two air defenses and one lava on the other and the way he deploys just works really really well so he puts down his rages he put both rages at the bottom because there is all of these teslas down there and they in the teslas they do so much damage you know they they do so much damage to your loons so he deploys the rages at the bottom he keeps up a few loons to help with the uh, upper side of the base and with the number of loons that he's managed to save with the speed of his deployment and the way he's put down his his lavas he's just he's just got the whole base you know and his archer queen is still up and still doing some tanking some damage and so it works really well um the other guys actually got the whole base they just ran out of time and he did that full attack with like i don't remember how much it was but like he had like 30 or 40 seconds left at the end so that's just to show you that a change and slight change in deployment just a very slight change of angle can completely change the outcome of the of the attack 
So that's it. Um, that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, coming back from my lovely 10 days uh, holiday. I hope you guys are all doing well. If there's anything specifically that you're interested in and want me to uh, show you, please let me know. We're now in a, in a new war, fortunately. Um, not a very good one. Uh, their bases are not that that good, and 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 we'll have to see how it goes. Maybe they'll change them. Let's hope for that. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll share new results very soon.